I see the fact that you and I are here at all as human beings, able to think about these things as a miracle which could not happen by pure chance. I don't see faith and science at odds with one another. The more we find out about the world, the more reason I believe that it is not here by accident. I see the world in all its goodness and brokenness as a gift to us. I've lost my dear father and a nephew who was always a dear friend. Both of them I miss terribly. It has affected the way I think more than I could have imagined. I seem to take them everywhere with me. They are in my thoughts far more than they were in this life. I hear their voices, maybe giving me advice, sometimes joking, always loving. Sometimes these thoughts make me so sad, but most of the time it just feels very natural, an ongoing conversation. Since I was young, I have always felt we arrived on this planet with a purpose that was beyond human physical existence, and that part of ourselves existed beyond this body, perhaps in the universe around us. It was a gut feeling that we were more than just flesh and bone. Growing up in Surrey Downs, I was happiest when climbing trees with nature, and had a strong feeling that the beautiful natural world around us might have some answers. Many people I have loved have died, young and old, it's very painful, and each time I have questioned my beliefs, and the closer I have felt to them, the more I have felt connected to them after their death, like a shared universal love. I feel like somehow they are showing me myself and helping me on my life journey. Over a period of time, I inadvertently drew away from God. I realized that when things weren't going well and I turned to prayer, only to find I couldn't pray, couldn't even remember the words of the Lord's Prayer. I opened my Bible and couldn't understand a word of it. Desperate to regain the relationship I once had with God, I started spending my lunchtime at the Old Souls Church in London, close to where I worked, pondering on things. There is a wall hanging of Jesus there, which I noticed every day. One day, as I was looking at it, the verse, No man came to the Father but by me, came to mind. I knew then that I was facing a big question. Did I believe? I couldn't pretend if I did or didn't, and I wasn't sure, but eventually the day came when I believed. I dashed into all souls and said the prayer and waited for something to happen. Nothing did. As I made my way back to the office, feeling deflated, I suddenly stopped in my tracks and couldn't move and could hardly get my breath, as I felt my chest swell and my whole being filling up. I knew something wonderful had happened. I thought I'd share a bit about my thoughts on taking a funeral as a priest, mother, wife and daughter. They're all part of what makes me me. To take a funeral, to walk alongside a family in their grief, at their time of greatest need, to offer them love, comfort and hope is a privilege beyond words. As priests, we walk on sacred ground the minute we cross that threshold into someone's grief. We are but fleeting on this earth, but God's love for us all is eternal and full of compassion. Life and death I think it's all about love, the love we have for one another, how we may die but our love never dies, and about how God loves us so much that he made us in his image and gave us Jesus to show what love really looks like. Dear Dad, it's been almost a year now since you died. In that time I've written a hundred letters and by now you're surely sick of hearing how sad I am. But in truth, the letters are for me more than they are for you. Sometimes they feel like a performance because they're nothing like the conversations we had when you were alive. And if you could ever read them, you'd think I'd change more than I have. Over the last few months, I've begun to question or even search for my beliefs. I've been reluctant to come to a conclusion because I'm scared to change. I don't want to turn into a person that you'd no longer recognise, and I don't want to stop being your daughter who shared your scepticism and light-heartedness on these things that I now seek comfort in. But I know really I could never stop being your daughter. So much of who I am comes from you. Everything I know comes from you and Mum, but also things inside of me that I don't know yet. I almost feel like the more I question about myself, the more I learn about you. And scepticism isn't enough anymore. You used to make me feel safe even when we were at opposite ends of the country. 
and since you died, I've felt lonelier than I ever thought possible. So over the last few months, I guess I've been searching for hope, among so many other things that I need to fill the hole you left. You see, I'm looking at your death selfishly. In some ways, it doesn't matter if there's a heaven. I always knew you'd be okay wherever you were. But where you are doesn't matter, only that you're not here. It doesn't make sense to me that everything you thought, every, every memory you kept, all the conversations we had are now gone. That you as a physical person no longer exists. That if I pick up the phone to call you, you won't be on the other end of the line. I don't really believe it still. Sometimes I call your phone just to check. For some reason I thought by the time I had written this to you I would have a conclusion. That I'd be able to say I had walked along the beach and the clouds had parted. And I knew in that moment everything would be okay. But it didn't and I still don't know. However, I've come to realise that I believe in something beyond my own conscious and the physical people around me. I think I believe something larger, perhaps a deeper part of myself that is connected to everything we don't see, that fills, fills the space we move around in. And I believe you exist in that space. I think you're in the air that I breathe, in the gap next to me on the sofa. I truly believe that you listen to every word I say, that you catch my tears and you share my jokes. I can't help but feel you're around me, even when sometimes it would be easier to not. And I think you visit me in my dreams. I've been searching for protection and comfort and ears to listen to my hundreds of thoughts and have been frustrated when I do not feel the presence of God all, all of a sudden. But I realise now that I have it. I still have you. And it's like you've been waiting patiently for me to realise that you were here all along. I was stupid to think that just because you're not here, you stop being my dad. And now I realise that nothing could replace you. I don't think I'll ever stop trying to find some kind of answer. And maybe in 10 or 20 years, I will write a letter that contains words that I feel confident to, to call true. But for now, even just the idea of you is enough. Because you exist in every cell of my body, and as long as I am alive, so are you. Love always, Ayla.